This is not the man I met. He is egotistical. He disrespects me. This entire marriage has been forced upon me. When you don't have trust, when you don't have that foundation, the relationship is over before it starts. I'm at my breaking point. He has a problem with spending. You have champagne taste on a soda water budget. Yes, What's honey, going on? come on, champagne taste. <laughs> it's about the taste, not about the budget. You can't trust him anymore. The man that I married would never have done that. I'm not going to advise her to try to make this work because I think it's dangerous. I think it's gone beyond that. Here is today's case. She says she's no longer willing to put up with her fiance's explosive and dangerous behavior. He says it's her nagging and constant criticizing that has driven a wedge between them. Will this couple walk out of the court still engaged? Or will their relationship come to an end? That's today's case on Divorce Court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, our virtual audience is filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Ray from Chambly, Georgia. Ray, welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us. Your Honor, this is the case of Thompson versus Flowers. Thank you, Juan. <clears throat> Ms. Darla Thompson. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your fiance, Mr. Dylan Flowers. Yes, Your Honor. To Divorce Court today. I understand the two of you are engaged, so you're not married yet. But you are here to see if you can work out some of your issues before you go down the path of marriage so you don't end up back here later? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I'll start with you, Ms. Thompson. Give me some background. Okay, well, um, I love Dylan very, very much. Um, however, we're having some huge issues. I'm tired of the disrespect, the anger, the laziness, and um, I, we can't go on if something doesn't change. Mm -hmm. He either needs to get on with it or I'm moving on. What do you have to say about that, Mr. Flowers? Um, trying to get some things in order and uh, Trying to fix our relationship, man. Uh, I got my fair share of problems, but she does too, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, we got some issues. You proposed, Mr. Flowers? Yes, yes, how, sure. How long ago? About a year ago. So you've been engaged for a year, but you've been in the relationship for how long? Um, three years, Your Honor. Three years. Give me some examples of some of these issues you say have caused you to reach a breaking point. Anger, huge anger issues. And we've talked about counseling, um, that never happened. But um, a great example is just recently we were out, um, it, was, it got a little late, time got away from us, and the gaslight didn't come on. So here we are, now we're stranded, it's two, three o'clock in the morning. Can't call anybody you know that we know because they have to work tomorrow. So here we are, we're four miles from the house. Um, he has to go and walk back to our house to go get a gas can and bring back, put gas in. Mm -hmm. I am terrified of the dark. Um, which he does know. So I'm sitting there and I'm trying to busy myself because all these things are going off in my head. So I turn on the radio and, you know, I'm distracting myself. Here he comes. Here comes the gas. He puts it in. And there's no power to the battery. I've, I've now let the battery run down. So here we are still stranded. You were listening to Midnight Storm while he was out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. But it wasn't, you could have just got on your phone, you know? It wasn't. I mean, you know you got a crappy battery, though. Yeah. It was Calm, kind of calm sense. Well, I'm terrified of the dark. I couldn't help it. He starts cussing. He starts calling me derogatory names. And we're on the side of the road. There's a house up here. People sleeping, you know. And next thing I know, the gas can hit my outer mirror. He threw the gas can. He and hit, hit it the with car? Um, the I gas hit, can. I was and it not trying to break it, but I did. Mirror. Uh, the gas can. I figured it was like a little lighter. Mm -hmm. But uh, and that's a photo of the mirror that was broken. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So you were out there yelling and causing a scene in the middle of the night. Yes, Your Honor. What was he calling you? A uh, stupid I didn't, slut. Uh, hold on, hold on. I didn't call you a freaking whore. I might have called you a hoe. But Same I you a whore. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't think that's the issue. It's not. You're, the, the difference in the vernacular, the terms that you use, mm -hmm. right? Because I wanted to know what kind of language we're dealing with when you get upset, when you get angry. Give me another example of what you say are these okay. outbursts. Um, this one in particular was a day at the park. So weekend, there's families out there, they got their kids, we're in a good mood. We bring our dogs and we go out to the lake. Now, I have a hip problem mm -hmm. and he, you know, he's very great with that. Well, it takes several trips from the car to bring out everything we need for the grill and the dogs. So it was three trips and um, now it's time to go. But now he's angry, he's trying to get me to help him. I can't carry that stuff up, I'll be down for a week. I can't really carry it up either though, you know, anymore. I used to be able to. So y'all go out on a picnic and neither one of you can carry the picnic items back to the car. So that but starts an argument? He's cussing me out and I, I cannot physically help. He knows this. 
going into it, we shouldn't have made three trips if that was the case. It was his idea to get the float. Those I mean, were his that ideas. That means you don't have to help me because it was my idea or what? So you said he cursed you out. What did, what, what did he call you that time? What happened? I was a whore of this, a um, uh, uh, fat, lazy <laughs> He's been throwing that in there a lot. Um, a piece of <laughs> And like families are out there, they're with their little kids. They can't even have a day out with their family because we can't get along. Anywhere we go, people can't, around us can't even have Because he was loud. Time. I mean, but you huh? know. He was loud? Oh, oh, so loud. And then if I, you know, if I ignore him but and I roll up the windows, well there, man. he's talking to text this loud, up and down the roads. Mm -hmm. it's so so y'all were that couple at the park that day? <laughs> Every Causing day, but yeah, that day. Mr. Flowers, what's going on? Why are you resorting to calling her, in your words, a hoe? To a fat? be honest? And you're talking loud and yelling where other people can see and hear you. Why? To be honest, I think I've just stopped caring as much as I used to mm -hmm. and uh, didn't make it right. Not saying it's necessarily all her fault, but... Uh, okay, so you're aware that it's become an issue. <sighs> yes, Your Honor. In your relationship. How do you feel after <clears throat> you have these angry outbursts in, in public, in front of other people? I got anger issues. Mm. Oh, you do? Yeah. So you're aware I, of that? I got anger issues, yes, Your Honor. When did that start? It's, it's been that way for a while now. Because the two of you have been together for two years. Is it, has it been this way for two years? No. As a matter of fact, uh, an ex of mine that I was still friends with, Your Honor, called me out of my name one word, one time in front of him. We weren't even dating yet. He defended me. He was angry. He couldn't even wrap his mind around. Mm -hmm. Not only did he defend me to him, but he, he was getting on to me for allowing that. Like, I couldn't believe that person was in my life mm. because I deserved more. That's the man I met. That's the man I know. And that's the man I, I still think there might be a chance with. Mm. He, uh, he used to be so different, so respectful, so attentive, um, caring. He, he was communicative. Everything you could think of that, that is lacking now, I, and then I wonder if it's because I've let it progress. Well, I, clearly something has yeah, happened. Yeah. And, and these angry outbursts are now be, being triggered when the two of you have conflict. We have a, a lot of messed up fights. I don't think it's right to sit there and assume. Take your time. Mr. Flowers? You said there, there are other things that are also manifesting itself in your relationship. Give me an example. Um, it goes again with the disrespect, um, laziness. I would be working that day. I'd come in, trashed. It's like I live with a kid or something, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm, I'm used to things like this. I'm used to him not caring about the things around, you know? When we moved in, it's my home. I mean, I still care and, about it, but you can't sit there and call me lazy, and then when no. you come in, just start your stuff. And oh, then Lord. you want to start I can when I mean, I, you don't, I, but you don't brought, know how to address an in issue my home. Mr. and Mr. just le leave it the issue. I have been lazy recently, but I've worked with issues, and it's like, Mr. Flowers, what is your reason for saying you've been lazy recently? Because, you know, I'm not saying I can do everything, but I do a lot of stuff around there, mm -hmm. and I have no problem with her being lazy because I'm lazy sometimes. Okay, but don't come in the freaking house, call me freaking lazy, mm -hmm. when all you're doing is cleaning up your bathroom. Okay, and not the entire house. Yeah, she, so, did the, she came into the dishes because <laughs> I was supposed to do them. Mm -hmm. You said that Mr. Flowers has been doing things to suppress his emotions. What do you mean by that? We get into it really good. Think, things start to progress. They start getting aggressive in, in the verbal. I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. And it might be nine hours or two days, but I'm sitting somewhere in my car, you know, because I don't have nowhere to go. I'm not going to put myself in situations. For two days? Sometimes. Tell me what happens when you come back home. Um, two sinks full of dishes when there was none when I left. But I'll start doing the dishes because they're not going to get done. I've done this four times in a row. Finally, this last time I threw my hands up. I said, I'm not doing it this time. I've been doing that. I feel like I'm babying the situation or maybe I'm helping it escalate by condoning it in some way. So I just threw my hands up. They sat there for four days. The dishes. Yeah, and I don't live like that. I don't live in filth. I don't like that. What now, do you have to say, Mr. Flowers? Spilled. What's going on? Are you emotionally eating? I guess we can call it that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm emotionally eating, Your Honor. I ain't trying to be a douchebag and just eat everything in the house, you know, leave her to nothing, but she's saying that she has to leave for two days at a time and stuff like that. We have a, a lot of messed up fights, and you don't have to freaking leave because lately it's been over the smallest thing. It don't have to get to that point. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think it's right to sit there and assume. Take your time. Mm-hmm. Mr. Flowers? Mm. Juan, would you go check on Mr. Flowers? Absolutely. Thank you. <clears throat> She's right about a lot. You can take your time, Mr. Flowers. Mm -hmm. I've done her like lately. Mm -hmm. What I see from you today is very encouraging because the first step to changing and wanting to do better in your life is acknowledging that you have an issue and that you have a problem. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. You good? Are you okay, Mr. Flowers? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I'm sorry you got upset in court today. How do you feel? I think I'm a little more pissed off at myself because uh, she's right about a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did defend myself a little too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a grown man. I know right from wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of. You can take your time, Mr. Flower. Mm -hmm. I've done it like mm -hmm. lately. Mm -hmm. And uh, it don't matter how bad it gets. Well, well, you know, Mr. Flowers, the good thing is I have a lot of people who come through this courtroom and they don't see an issue mm -hmm. with their actions. They try to defend themselves and justify the things that they've done. And what I see from you today is very encouraging because the first step to changing and wanting to do better in your life is acknowledging that you have an issue and that you have a problem. That is the first step. So I commend you for recognizing that there is an issue. This all started after the two of you were in the relationship. Is there something that happened in your life that brought all of this about? Because she said in the beginning that everything was, was so great and you even defended her when someone called her out of her name. Is there something that and happened? I, and I'm, I'm calling her a just like he did, and I'm, I don't, I don't get it myself. You don't get it? Yeah, because I'm mm -hmm. turning into that kind of guy that um, mm -hmm. I'm sitting there judging him for. Well, I want to get you some help, Mr. Flowers. W would that be okay? Would you accept help from this courtroom <sighs> to talk to someone to help you work through some of these emotions you're you're dealing with in this relationship and in life? <sighs> I, I would, but uh, I'm just. My dad told me once, can't know what else really fix the problems with you. That's right, mm -hmm. but you know what else, sir? No one makes it alone. We all need help from time to time. So you're, you're right, you're gonna be the one that's gonna fix some of these issues you're having. I'm just offering you some help. You don't have to do it all on your own, is what I'm saying. Okay, thank you. Okay? I have a therapist actually here on standby in court today. His name is Mr. Abalash Pulikin. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking you if you'll start just by meeting with him today and having a talk with him and then you can go from there. Okay, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Is there anything that you recognize that precipitated all of this, Ms. Thompson? Um, I don't know uh, how it all progressed to this, to be honest, because if I did, because I'm, I'm very analytical and I rack my brain all the time trying to find the answer to the solution I can't find. I know that I'm not an angel. I know that I have a lot of issues on how I deal with things and I'm setting my ways and I'm hard headed and I'm, I'm kind of dominant in how I, I think things should go. Mm -hmm. But I'm willing to work on whatever I need to mm -hmm. to salvage this. So, I mean, I know he has separate issues that he needs to talk with somebody about, but as far as like our issues, I'm willing to go that step and get it. And, and work on that with him. Okay, great. Um, so he's not alone in that, and I don't, I don't know the answer to that. If I did, I'd, I'd be fixed. Mm. Just to have clarity on uh. everything that's transpired before you, the two of you go and meet with Mr. Pulikin, you said that when you leave for these hours or days at a time and you come home, he tells you what? 
He's a lot more open-minded. He's not angry anymore. Well, you, you now told he's hurt, me. and then he's he's open to tell me, you know, well when you left, you know, and, and you wouldn't come back, and you wouldn't answer. I started emotionally ate. That's why I ate all that. This has just started happening, and that was his words. Mm -hmm. And my concern is he has put on extra weight. I mean, he's a, just barely 29. How much weight are you talking about? Um, maybe <laughs> 30, 30 or so pounds. I've gained a lot of weight. Uh, but his family what has time frame? hereditary. Uh, about s maybe six months or so. Six months. Uh, it's just been been a, an issue lately to where it's it's kind of dominating when he's alone, and he has uh, heart problems that are hereditary in his family. His dad spoke with me about because he's concerned, so he's talked to me by myself about it, and so I can maybe try to help change it by cooking stuff different or doing things to help. You said there's one other issue that you want to address because we're gonna address all of them. When you talk to Mr. Pullican, you said that's the video games. What happened with that? One of the, the biggest things is we can be next to each other for all day long, but it's so lonely. Um, if it's not on the television, it's on the phone. It's constant games, constant. And he doesn't spend money doing it. Um, that's not the problem, it's constant. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if we're talking, we're eating dinner. Um, we've been fighting all day. He wants me to come in and we come in, we're getting along. Five minutes later, he's there on the, on the phone. Yeah. Is there a reason, is there a specific reason for that, Mr. Flowers? As crappy as that sounds, I just love video games. Well, I mean, a lot of people do, but, but in should, terms of the I time should, that like, you're playing. I should cut him off and because I do get it that it's hurting her feelings mm -hmm. a lot. Okay. Everything I've heard today, gaining the 30 pounds over the last six months, that's extremely concerning from a physical and psychological perspective. And paired with the sudden burst of anger and outburst you're having, paired with you now playing video games 24 seven as a method of escape, there's a lot going on with you. And because of that, your relationship has suffered. And that's why you've ended up here in divorce court today. Uh, now I understand and I have a much broader perspective. And you said today yourself, you're no angel. You know why? Because you're trying to navigate how to deal with all of this. Yeah. And you say yourself, you haven't done a great job of that because you believe that there's a better way. And there is. You know, it's easy to fall in love, but it takes work to stay there. And, you know, I want to be with you and I want to work on this, but I say that all the time and... Well, so let today be the day you actually start the work and be a better person because the person that I'm looking at in court today, it's hard to imagine you calling her all of these names and, and, and in such a demeaning way because I really do believe that you know you can be a better person. She's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's, I shouldn't be calling her bitches and stuff like that. Mr. And, Flowers? Uh, so hopefully today will start your journey to finding out what's going on with you and the two of you can work on it. I'm glad you came to divorce court yes. before you got married so you can get the help you need and work on some of these issues so you don't end up back here later down the road. I'm yes. gonna have you meet with Mr. Pullican when you leave court today. I do wish the both of you well. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Um, actually, him taking accountability, um, I, I think it, it it makes me feel like there's hope for the future, that maybe we can work some of, the, some of this out because it's, it's seen, it's acknowledged, maybe now it can change. Oh, I'm, really is just a lot of mixed emotions. Uh, just about everything has, just about everything has changed for bad with me. Obviously not call her out her name anymore, try, try to work on my anger. Uh, Cause that has been one of the main things. It is my anger and she's told me and I've ignored her. But as far as taking any help that I can, yeah. As far as moving forward, it'd be great if uh, he got some work on this, but if it doesn't, then um, there's no forward.